In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to use infrared receivers with Arduino without using any library. This is how we should connect our devices and the supply voltage is 5V DC. Infrared sensor I am using here is TSOP1738, uh, which is a 38kHz one and this is 5V compatible. I have used digital pin 4 and 5 for controlling the relay module and the digital pin 8 as a signal input. And that is all for the diagram, so now we will check the source code. At first, I have declared and defined some variables here, and they have been defined as volatile variables to avoid compile optimizations. This has to be done because we are using interrupt service routines and some compilers optimize global variables if they are only used in interrupt service routine function. So what will happen if we do not define variables used inside the ISR as volatile, they will be removed by the compiler assuming they are not used in anywhere inside the program. So this will only happen with interrupt service routing functions. And uh, then I have few function prototypes here. I will explain their functionality later. Before going into the programming part, I will explain the format of an infrared data stream. The remote I am using here has this format. First, it has a square wave with a uh, wavelength or cycle length of around 13.5 milliseconds and following that cycle, here comes the 32-bit data stream and the stream also consists with fixed cycle lengths of around 1.2 milliseconds and 2.3 milliseconds. Every cycle starts with the falling edge. If the cycle length is around 1.2 millisecond and this value can be slightly changed but uh, if the value is 1.2 milliseconds it is considered as zero if the cycle length is around 2.3 millisecond it is considered as one or logic one so the first part of the code is uh, that i'm going to go through is actually uh, the setup function and here i have a relay controlling uh, part actually the relay controller config function and i'm using direct register controls instead of using arduino native pin mode or digital write functions for this and inside this function i have configured digital pin 4 and 5 of the pro mini as outputs uh, then their initial values are set to logic high as uh, the relay module will disengage the relays if its inputs uh, get logic high right and now um we have timer one config for capture function and here i have configured timer one input capture to trigger when falling edge is detected and the digital pin 8 has to be set up as a digital input uh, and the timer one counter will increment its value at every four microsecond so the prescaler values uh, have to be set to 64. finally timer one input capture interrupt has been enabled so remaining are actually for the debugging and I have used serial interface for it. Before discussing the loop function, I will go through the remaining functions. And we have two functions for controlling the relays of the relay module. So what these functions do is uh, they will toggle the digital pin 4 and 5 values based on the received signal from the remote controller. The most important function is actually the interrupt service routing function. Uh, this function uh, will be triggered by the hardware when a falling edge is detected at ICP1 pin of the Pro Mini. This is the digital pin 8 of the board and after receiving the first falling edge, the function will be ready to receive the incoming data stream. Starting from the second falling edge, this function will update input capture data array one by one and the ICR1 register provide uh, the timer one counter value in between two falling edges. ICR1 register does not give the direct time period so we need to multiply it by 4 microsecond so that is what we set uh, when we configure the timer 1 uh, to increment at every 4 microsecond. To get the corresponding value in microseconds we have to multiply the ICR1 register value by 4 microseconds so it will give us the uh, time uh, delay between or the time gap between two falling edges. During this process if we uh, if any cycle occurs in which has more than 2.5 millisecond length, this process will be reset and will start again with a new falling edge. Otherwise, it will capture all the incoming data as the time uh, periods and put them in the array. After each interrupt, 
we have to uh, reset the timer so that is why i have uh, set timer one to zero at every interrupt cycle now we have to discuss the get command function and this is where we uh, where the captured data is decoded and the decoding process is pretty straightforward considering the captured cycle length the corresponding bit will be chosen and the bit will be set in the receive stream so after each bit is set current value of the receive stream will be left shifted by one unless it is the last value of the received array then the value will be displayed on the serial monitor for debugging uh, this will help you to identify the data sent by your remote because the different because different uh, devices have different values so the remote i'm using is actually a tv remote uh, the manufacturer is lg right if your remote controller manufacturer is different and if you are using a different remote controller you will not uh, get the same values as i get so depending on the value you get you have to set it in the code uh, in a corresponding uh, you know code lines then you will be able to control your relays properly finally the values will be written back to the uh, back to where the function was called and that is it for the get command function and the last one is the loop function and here the get command function will be checked by the switch statement and based on the written value the relay control function will be called so that is it guys and if you think this video helps you to learn something please press the like button and subscribe my channel to see more videos like this thank you for watching